Today we're talking about searching. It's such a fundamental part of using Vernon CMS. Finding what you're looking for is so important. So it's probably one of the most important skills that you'll need to learn. We're going to cover the basics of search right through to advanced searching, including select statements. Even if you're an experienced user of Vernon CMS, you might pick up a trick or two today. And if you're more at the beginner level, I really hope that this gives you more confidence and improves your ability to find things in Vernon CMS. So we've got a lot to get through today. So let's get started. Here is the search bar at the top of the screen. And you can see that it's grayed out at the moment. And that's because to do a search on a file, you have to have that file open. So let's open object identification. And now you can see that it says search on object. The search bar looks in a limited number of search fields. And you can see what those search fields are by clicking on the three dot menu to the left of the search bar. So for example, in the object file, the search bar looks at accession number, system ID, name, title, other ID, artist maker, and classification. You can restrict the search by selecting one of these fields. So for example, accession numbers may contain the same numbers as system IDs. And so you might want to restrict the search to just the system ID field. Another example is that the last names of makers, for example, black, may also be in the name title field. I can select artist maker, and you can see now it says search on object artist maker. To change back to all fields, click the three dot menu and click reset to default. Now it goes back to search on object. Another way to restrict your search in the search bar is to use search keys. So you can type in the search key for a field, then a backslash, and then your query. So for example, to restrict your search to the system ID fields, you can enter ID, backslash, and then the ID number. And that finds my record. You can see that it has the ID 90 there. To restrict your search to the other ID field, for example, you can enter other, backslash, and then the other ID number. And that's found that record. And if I click on the other ID name tab, you can see that that number is in the other ID field there. So these search keys are listed in the search options under the three dot menu. So it's these ones listed here under search key. So if you're looking for accession number, you could type ACC and then a backslash and then the number there. Vernon also has several search operators to help you find what you're looking for. So operators are special characters. And the most common one is a right square bracket. This is called the starts with operator and Vernon will look for anything that starts with your query. So for example, if I open the person identification window and I search for Paul, P-A-U-L, Vernon will find exact matches of that. It's always looking for exact matches. So it finds those examples there. If I type P-A-U, it won't find anything because we don't have an exact match for that. But if I type P-A-U in a right square bracket, it's going to look for anything that starts with that. So the starts with operator is at the end of the query and it's the right square bracket and it's looking for things that start with that. So if I do a search on that, it's found Paul. It's also found Pauline. The right square bracket can also be used in authority fields, and this can speed up your data entry. So, for example, in the object type field, I could type digi, 
in a right square bracket and it's going to find digital projector and I just hit enter and it'll enter that in. So if you know that you've got only one term in that file that starts with those letters, you can just type in three or four of those letters, press the right square bracket and then hit enter and it'll bring that up. Another tip is that you can use just the right square bracket in the search bar to find everything in that file. So that is starting with anything. Don't do this on the object file because it's going to look up all your records. But let's say you wanted to tidy up your terms in the object type file. So I can click into the object type and press go to, and that's going to open up the object type file for me. And then in the top here in the search bar, I can press just the right square bracket. And when I hit enter, it's going to bring up all of the terms that are in that file. And so in this example, let's say I wanted to change the word drawing, I can open it from there and change it and save it. So another search operator is the left square bracket, which is used at the start of a search query, and that's called the ends with operator. So let's say I want to enter Keith McDonald as the maker for this object, but I can't remember if his name is spelt MC Donald or MAC Donald. If I enter a left square bracket and then Donald, Vernon will look for anything that ends with Donald. So it's going to find McDonald and McDonald. So you can see in this example, we have both McDonald and McDonald found there. So I can just choose Keith McDonald. If you put square brackets around your search query, Vernon will look for anything that contains your search query. So if I put a left square bracket and then T-R-E-E -E, and then a right square bracket, Vernon will look for anything that contains those letters. And so in this example, it's found tree, but it's also found street. So that's the contains operator. If you put both square brackets before your search query, Vernon will look for anything that sounds like your search query. This operator is often used when searching for person names. So if I go to person identification window and do a search on person, Let's say we want to open up Jean Batten's record, but we're not sure how her last name is spelt. I can enter the left square bracket, the right square bracket, and type in Batten. And it's found Jean Batten's record. So that's the sounds like operator. You can also search for ranges of numbers, such as accession numbers, by entering three dots or ellipses between your numbers. So, for example, I can enter 2011.1, three dots, and then 2011.999, and it will find all the records in that range with that accession number that's in that range. You can also use the greater than and lesser than symbols to find numbers, and I'll show you an example of that in a moment. So as I mentioned, the search bar will only look in a limited number of fields. When you want to search in other fields, you need to use advanced search. So let's open up advanced search. You can see there's several search methods listed here. And the most common one is search fields, which is the first option. And it's probably the one that you use most often. So let's look at some examples of search fields. All the search fields are listed here on the right that Vernon has indexed. And some text fields are listed here. So for example, name title is listed here, brief description is in the list, but not all text fields are available. So if you want to do a general search across all text fields, select all text. And so, for example, I know that we have some records in the demo system that have notes about Project Gutenberg, but I'm not sure which field those notes are in. So I'll select all text, click next, 
And then in the search for field, we'll type in Gutenberg, click next, and then finish. And if I look at object acquisition provenance and rights in the provenance and rights tab for this first record, I can see in the credit line field that Project Gutenberg is mentioned there, and that's a text field. So you can also search in other accession number fields. So if you don't know the entire accession number of the records that you're trying to find, you can choose the accession number no format option from the list of fields. You can enter partial accession numbers and ranges of partial accession numbers. So if I choose that option and go next, and then in the search for field, enter 1999 and put a right square bracket, go next, and click finish to open up those records. We can see that Vernon has opened all of the records that start with 1999. You can search within the date fields of a record and actually date searches can only be done with advanced search. So let's go into advanced search. In the list of fields, I know that production date is in there, but it's quite a long list. I'm not sure exactly where it is. So I'm going to use this field up here to search the list for production date. I'll select it and press next. And then I can click in here and I can type a date. Or I can click the options button to bring up this date search window. So I put in the from and to dates. You can leave the to field blank to get everything after a certain date. You can leave the from field blank to get everything before a certain date. And if you wanted to include a date that's outside of that range, you can include it in the exceptions field. So in this example, I'm going to enter 1st of January 2011. And in the to field, 1st of January 2012. Now, the search type field you can use to specify your results. So the contained option searches for dates that are only between the dates that you entered. So in this example, a contained search would only return objects with the production dates of the 1st of January 2011 to the 1st of January 2012. The mostly search type searches for dates where over 50% of the date range falls within the range that you entered. So in this example, a mostly search would return items that had production dates between the 1st of January 2011 and the 1st of January 2012, but it will also return items with imprecise production dates that mostly fall within the range, such as November 2010 to July 2011. The overlapping search type is the default option, and it searches for dates where any part of the date range falls within the date range that you entered. So in this example, an overlapping search would return objects with any production date related to 2011 to 2012, including 2000 to 2012, 2011 to 2015, or 21st century. So it's the broadest search type. So in this example, I'm just going to choose contained, click OK, click next, and it's found one record there. Some valuation search fields also have special options. So if I go into advanced search and the list of search fields, I'll search for valuation. I'll keep pressing find until I find the one I'm looking for which is insurance valuation latest. When I click next, it pops up this object valuation retrieval window and I can enter a low value, a high value, and click OK. Then I can press next and click finish to bring up my records. You can search within lists in advanced search. So you can open a saved list 
from portfolio by selecting save list and then in list name you can either type in the name or you can click the options button to open portfolio I'm going to select this 20th century objects list and click OK. Then I'll click next. So you can see that and is selected by default. And this is the most common of these types of searches where you can refine your search with another query. So we're looking within this list for something in particular. So I'll click next. And the thing I'm looking for is an object type. And it's jug is what I want to find within that list. So I click next and we can see that it says retrieve with this list of 72 records and it has the object type of jug. We've got four records there. So I just click finish and I can open up my browse list of jugs. Or let's say you have a list of records open. So I'm going to do a search for vase select all of the items. Let's say I wanted to search within this list for all of the objects that are called Carlton Ware, so where that is in the name title field. I can click Advanced Search and then I click Context Search. And is chosen by default and we can click Next. And then within this list of vases, I want to search on the name title field click next and I can search for Carlton, click next and I've got one object in there with that word in the name title field. So select statements, let's have a look at that. I'll open up advanced search. Not every field is listed in advanced search. We don't index every field because it takes time for Vernon to index them and it makes it slow when you're trying to save a record. So we don't index every single field. So sometimes you may need to use a select statement to, to look in a particular field. Select statements also allow you to search for phrases in text fields, which you can't do just by using the search fields option. So I'll choose select statement. Select statements have five parts. Depending on the search that you're using, you may use less or more than that. They're made up of the file that you're searching within, for example, object. This part is entered by Vernon. You don't need to type that in, and I'll show you that in a moment. A keyword, and that's usually with the internal field name of the field that you want to search in. A comparison operator, which is very often the equals sign. And then lastly, the data that you're looking for. So let's look at some examples. Search on the text indexes is at word level. So you can search on one or more words, but the index doesn't hold the original sentences, so it can't find exact phrases. With a select statement, we can look at phrases, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's say we want to find records that contain the phrase B fly, which is a type of fly. If I search for B fly in the brief description field, as I'm just part of the search fields, it would find records that contained those words, but not necessarily where they're next to each other. So with my select statement, I can type in here with. So that's the keyword. I'll enter brief underscore desk, which is the internal field name for brief description. I'll enter containing. This is the comparison operator. We wouldn't use the equal sign here because then it would look for brief descriptions that contained only that text. And then we'll put B fly in quotation marks. And when I press enter on my keyboard, Vernon's going to convert that into the select statement. So Vernon's put select object at the start and it's put it all in capital letters. So if I click next, it's found 34 results. And if I click finish, we can see our B flies. Another example is searching for number fields with a select statement. 
So let's say I want to find records that describe more than one item. So a common example of that would be a tea set or a cup and saucer. So I've chosen select statement and I'm going to enter with, so that's the keyword, item underscore count, which is the internal field name for item count. I'll enter a right angle bracket, which is the greater than sign, and this is the operator, and then one. So when I hit enter, Vernon will convert that to select object with item count greater than one. Click next, and I've got five results. I'll click finish, and that will bring up my list. And so for example, here we have a set of three dishes. To find the internal field name for any field in Vernon, you just click into the field. So in this example, I will go to the media measurement tab and click on the item count field and go to help database information. Or you can press Alt F1 on your keyboard. And I click that and it brings up the information about that field and that is the internal field name there, item underscore count. Just ignore the FMC part in brackets. So that's how you can find the internal field name. We have information on our help website about select statements, which I will share in the description of the YouTube video once that's published. So the last thing that I wanted to share with you is how you can search across files. So far, I've just been looking only in the advanced search on object. But let's say you wanted to find all the objects where the primary maker was a woman. You can open advanced search on object. In this list, I'm going to search for primary maker. Select that and click next. In the search for field, I'm going to click the options button and that's going to open up advanced search on person. So you can see we've branched to another file here. I'll choose gender, click next, and I'll use the options button to select female, click OK, click next, and I have 27 makers in my person file where the gender is female. When I click finish, it'll close the person search and it will show the results in List Manager. And from here, I click OK, and that puts those people in my advanced search on object. So now I can click Next, and I have 17 objects where the primary maker was a woman. So I can click Finish, and I have my list of objects. So another example, of searching across multiple files is doing an advanced search on object. So in this case, I want to find objects that have been collected from a particular field collection site. I want to find all insect specimens from Queensland. I'm going to search this list for site and find field collection site. Click next. And then in the search for field, Again, I'll click the Options button, and that's going to open up an advanced search on the site file. I'll choose Place as my search field, and click Next. In Search for, I'll type in Queensland. Select that. Go Next, and click Finish. And again, that's generated this list of places. I'll click OK. That puts that list in the search for field and when I click next I can see that I have 27 insect records in Queensland so I'll click finish and that opens up my 27 records there.